after studying this module you would know about the concept of branding you would also come to know about gap that is us gap and ifrs provisions for brand recognition you would be able to identify the significance of branding in accounting branding was originally used to differentiate uh, tangible products but over the years it has been applied to differentiating people places and firms a brand has been defined by doyle and stern as a name a term a sign a symbol or a design or a combination of all of these which is intended to identify the goods and services of one seller or producer as against uh, its competitor this of course would also apply to group of companies under one banner thus the aim of brand management is to brand a product or service in such a manner that it is difficult for a competitor to imitate it and which gets the preference of the customers this can be done through differentiating by offering unique benefits that deliver value to the customers mostly this value is perceived by the customers in terms of quality these values are communicated with a value proposition that intends to satisfy the psychological needs of the specific target market when branding efforts become successful and the brand is considered to be strong then the company's experience changes the behavior of the customers in their own favor and this leads to brand loyalty strong brands have the advantage of producing brand equity branding aims to make the product distinctive and more attractive to the customers compared to the ones of the competitors in order to reach a com competitive advantage in the market when a painter signs his or her name and a farmer marks his or her livestock in order to distinguish his uh, animals his cattle from the cattle of other farmers then it is known as branding so this is a very physical origin of the term branding the painter and the farmer do so as they aim to create awareness uh, related to uh, and the loyalty to their products and services the competition amongst the leading brands was found to have an increased awareness and quality of the products amongst various industries the strong competition was witnessed amongst uh, companies like procter and gamble and unilever and they have uh, resorted to such branding techniques in order to win the brand war many companies shifted their focus towards their marketing campaigns while uh, competing in the market by focusing towards marketing aspects organizations seek to improve their corporate brand and win the consumers trust which in return shows the loyalty of the consumers in uh, the forbes magazine uh, an article has appeared recently named 
Why Branding is Important written by Scott Goodson and what he says is that brands outlive product cycles. No branding, no differentiation, no differentiation, no long term profitability. People don't have relationships with products they are loyal to brands. Brand strength often runs parallel to the success of a company. Customers prefer a brand by using which they feel is comfortable and which makes them feel they are using products that are different from the general products available in the market. The brand loyalty influences the customer's decision while buying the product in the market in such a manner that the customers buy their favorite brand on comparing it with other normal brands in the market. Companies have started using this approach of becoming the favorites uh, for the customers towards uh, the aim of gaining a competitive advantage over their competitors. Apple Incorporated has used this approach very effectively in the market in such a manner that people book their products in advance even before getting to know and even before actually using the product. People have become crazy to buy Apple products just because of its brand value and this creates an advantage both in terms of competition and in terms of actual monetary or financial value created through this approach towards branding. Customer loyalty makes the customers believe in the company in a way that the uh, ensuing products would be of high quality and would be worth uh, spending the money on. It is the trust of the customers in the company's uh, reputation, the image and the quality that would provide them the most suitable products, the impression, the confidence that the company would be giving them the products according to their needs and this has led to the phenomenon of making the customers permanent, retaining the customers and this is what is known as brand loyalty. This trust factor is the key to gain customer loyalty and to make sure that customers will get back the companies get back to the companies for future purchases as well. For the society today, branding has become extremely important. Companies increasingly rely on branding for success today. The current accounting procedures, however, do not account for valuation of branding. The uh, Customers perceive the brand based on the value of the product or services being offered. Brand equity, therefore, is not a physical, tangible asset. It can be considered to be an intangible asset because of the reasons mentioned above. Brand equity contributes in the overall valuation of the assets of the company. Positive brand equity is the result of the perception of the customers in which they are willing to pay more for a generic version of the product of a recognizable brand. On the contrary, 
the brand equity is considered to be negative when the customers are not willing to pay anything more than the quoted price of a, a particular company or brand. For instance, if a consumer is willing to pay rupees 100 for a, a, let us say a toothpaste uh, rather than purchasing the store uh, uh, from the store a brand uh, which is not known for rupees 70. The particular brand would then is then creating a positive equity and this translates into a value prem premium for the manufacturer. Similarly, some producers of commodities, uh, let us say a generic product like eggs may experience negative brand equity because consumers are not concerned with any specific brand of eggs that they purchase. Of course, increasingly these days we find branding in a whole range of general products as well. Uh, at present, economic resources that the entity has uh, right uh, or other access to that others do not have, such a resource is known as an asset. They are expected, the assets are expected to provide future cash flows. What is brand? The marketing practice of assigning a name, a symbol, a design, etc. to a product or service to identify and differentiate it from the rest of the market. It is an intangible asset that affects the future cash flow. Therefore, branding could be treated as or a brand could be treated as an asset. This brings us to what brand equity is all about. Brand equity is also known as brand power. The collective value of a brand as perceived by the consumers is basically brand equity. It is the amount consumers are willing to pay over and above the product's worth to receive the value of a brand. It is measured by its strength to compete and its future sustainability. Brand equity is measured based on the characteristics uh, in uh, that could be identified in familiarity, loyalty, promotion, staff satisfaction, quality and corporate reputation. What is brand value? The internal value of a brand developed by a company is brand value. It includes all the research and development and the resources used to build and develop the brand. Brand value is the are the benefits generated by a brand minus any cost of acquiring and owning the brand. So, brand value equals the tangible brand attributes plus brand equity minus the price of the attributes that have been paid for obtaining the brand. Valuation, the assessment by financial analysts and marketeers of the value of a brand which takes into account various factors including the power of a brand and the brand's growth potential. These are the factors which lead to valuation of a brand. Let us now consider the US GAAP accounting standard for brand recognition. The US GAAP does not recognize internally created intangible assets. 
The reason behind this is that internally generated assets cannot be determined, its value cannot be determined and assessed in a proper and fair manner. On account of this, GAAP does not put internally generated assets in the balance sheet. Exceptions do arise when there is an issue of accounting the expenditure of research and development. For valuation of any brand, research and development expenses necessary to create the brand and trademark has to be accounted for. Advertisement costs which are a prerequisite to promote the brand to the general public also need to be accounted for. On account of the accounting principles, problems are encountered by reputed organizations such as Apple or Microsoft. A brand like Apple cannot and should not capitalize its brand name under current standards. Apple is worth billions of dollars in addition to what the balance sheet reports attributable to the strong brand that it has been able to build up in the past so many years. But because its brand has been created internally, it is unlikely to be sold at any time very soon and therefore Apple or other such famous brands uh, brand value will not be accounted for in its own in their own financial statements in the near future. Acquired brands are a different story however. They can be given a value based on the amount they are sold for or purchased in the open market. Acquired brands are recognized as the goodwill of the purchasing company. They are the extra amount paid, paid for over and above and beyond the balance sheet value of the company. Once a company is sold, goodwill can be measured as a book value and the market value can be compared to derive a value for goodwill. A brand recorded on the books of an acquirer is kept at historical cost, the cost for which the brand was purchased. They cannot be revalued under the US gap. So, hypothetically, if Tata's were to acquire McDonald's, and magnify the brand throughout the world, the value of McDonald's brand would remain the same on the financial uh, uh, statements on the balance sheet as and when it was acquired at the historical cost. The increase in the market brand value would be ignored again as uh, a result of the difficulty of determining the internally created value. There is an exception to the rule however. No revaluation is allowed of internally uh, generated assets. The above theory has an exception when goodwill diminishes on the assets with indefinite lives such as most brands do. Impairment of or diminishing of the goodwill occurs when the carrying value of the goodwill exceeds the fair value. Goodwill impairment tests and resulting accounting procedures attempt to write down the value of goodwill on the financial statements to reduce its value if it appears that the said value is augmented. It is then tested to evaluate whether goodwill and the brand has been negatively affected by such factors as uh, reduced brand power, 
the economy at large and the range of other factors and reduce it down accordingly to prevent goodwill from reflecting inflated numbers and values. The assessment of fair value of the brand is a difficult job as they are not sold on a regular basis in the market. However, brand finance can be utilized to know the fair value of the brand. Uh, in this comparable brand values on the market and estimates from consulting firms are utilized to determine the value of the brand in question. These numbers can help estimate goodwill impairment. Unfortunately, US GAAP does not currently permit companies to report increases in the brand value once the brands have been acquired and booked at the initial cost. There is only a means to devalue a declining or overinflated brand value. This enables accountants to remain conservative in making the estimates. Companies often report on the ways in which they have measured the internally generated brands. Improvement upon the externally purchased brands and how they have intended to acquire more brands to extend the company's brand power. But this behavior only appears in companies where strong branding practices are a part of the corporate culture. For CEOs who have worked diligently to stress the importance and impact of well-known brands. For other brands, little or nothing is mentioned in the financial statements or in the press releases to the public. Because reporting on brand value is not a requirement, it is not mandatory. And in the case of internally generated brand value, uh, basically most of the brand valuation and equity remains unreported. Many companies do not acknowledge the importance of brand equity in their financial statements. The marketing field has recognized the validity of branding for many decades also through employer branding. But only in recent years has the financial world begun to recognize the value of brands and study the long-term implications that strong brands can have on the financial markets. In turn, financial analysts have begun to perform more studies on stock market performances and is uh, related to the brand strength and are beginning to find out ways to use the analysis to make smart investment decisions. The investors learn to utilize trends in brands uh, and it would become necessary that accountants provide reports and documenting that quantify the changes in the brand value. It is the job of the accountants to provide reliable and helpful reports for investors to get a transparent look at companies in order to make the best possible investment decisions. Brand value should be made apparent and obvious to the public so that they can make the best possible investment decisions for themselves. Right now, because accountants are not providing that level of detail with regard to brands, there is an obvious gap in the financial statements and reports and accounts. Now let us consider IFRS. International accounting for brand recognition, virtually the same rules as GAAP generally apply under the IFRS. Under IFRS, brands, mastheads, 
publishing titles, customer lists and items similar in substance that are internally generated should not be recognized as assets. This is according to IAS 38.63. Under IFRS, development costs are capitalized instead of being treated as expenses. However, advertising costs are expenses when they are incurred, that is currently it is treated as a current revenue expenditure. Under IFRS, revaluation to fair value is allowable for intangible assets such as production quotas, fishing licenses, taxi licenses, all except goodwill. Revaluation is performed only when with reference to an active market that is if an active market is present this is IAS 38.75 for intangible assets active markets may act as a reference for revaluation but this is extremely uncommon therefore the revaluation model is rarely used for intangibles. Instead, as under the gap, intangibles including goodwill after initial recognition are most often carried at the uh, historical cost less any accumulated amortization for assets with a finite life. And impairment of losses. Why is a brand significant? A brand is the intangible reputation that a firm holds amongst its customers. Brands help customers to know what they are going to get when they buy a branded product or service. A brand helps customers to create exceptions about the quality of a company. It helps to accumulate and advertise the attributes of a given company. A simple trademark image such as a golden arch or an apple half bitten should give the customer a very good starting point for creating an expectation about the associated service or product in terms of its quality, reliability and so on. A brand gives a company a personality. Brands foster loyalty amongst consumers because of this distinctive personality that is bestowed upon a company by the brand. People are generally willing to pay more when they perceive a brand to be consistent and to be a hallmark of such quality. For example, teenagers mostly like to shop in the uh, new malls for branded products such as uh, Levi's jeans. Uh, and very often the goodwill which goes into the making of such brands may not be very apparent. Ordinarily both kinds of clothes that is branded and non-branded clothes may have the basic uh, you know, may have similar raw material and may also be incurring similar basis in terms of the basic cost. But the difference comes because consumers uh, believe that by buying brands, they would be getting their value for money in terms of the distinctiveness of the quality, reliability and so on. 
For example, a consumer is more likely to spend more on a Mercedes car than a Ford. Consumers would expect in the first place that a Mercedes car would be more expensive and therefore they are willing to pay more for buying a Mercedes provided. Of course, we are talking about two consumers who are alike in terms of their paying capacity. Now, what is the significance of branding in accounting? As stated above, branding provides a value to the company beyond the tangible assets held by the company. It entices the consumers to purchase certain goods and services. For example, many iPhone users purchase their phones because they trust the quality of the Apple brand. Sometimes we find such users queuing up for a new version of the iPhone being released. This is a value that goes beyond the value of the physical asset, assets held by the company and it is invaluable, especially for such famous brands as uh, Apple, Microsoft, Coca-Cola, Google, etc. Brand value is not currently recorded on the balance sheets of any financial statements of any company. It is left to the financial analysts, marketeers, economists to assess this value. However, it is problematic for investors. It fails to fairly present a company's financials uh, in the eyes of the public. A hypothetical company may have the same assets as that of Apple, but without the same brand awareness in the marketplace. Blindly looking at the financial statements of each investor, uh, of each of these companies, the investors would not know the difference. A sensible investor would be able to distinguish between Apple and any ordinary company. Apple may appear to be similar to any other company in terms of its balance sheet, but the, it is the responsibility of the accountants and the corporate executives to make the public aware of the status of a company in a way that allows the public to compare the company's net worth in terms of brand value such as uh, that of the comparison between Apple and a hypothetical company which is its competitor which may be having an equal asset base. It is important that the accounting professionals at least consider the implications of its current standards and contemplate a change to why brands need to be recorded. A summary, brand is a name, a term, a sign, a symbol or a design or any combination of all of these which is intended to identify goods and services of one seller or group of sellers and to differentiate them from those of the competitors. Branding aims to make products distinctive, more attractive and to customers compared to the ones of the other competitors in order to give our company, a branded company, a competitive advantage in the market. Customers perceive the brand based on the value of the product or service being offered. Brand equity, therefore, is not a physical or tangible asset. Brand equity contributes in the overall valuation of the assets of the company. Positive brand equity results in the better perception of the customers in which they are willing to uh, pay more for this particular product, this branded product rather than a generic version of the product. 
brand equity is considered to be negative when customer is not willing to pay. US GAAP does not recognize internally created tangible assets uh, to be accounted for in the balance sheets, uh, particularly when it comes to brand equity. Once a company is sold, goodwill can be measured in terms of the book value and the market value and be compared to derive the value of goodwill. The assessment of fair value of a brand is difficult and this happens because these transactions do not normally take place in the market. Brand value should be made apparent and obvious to the public so that they are good judges of the worth of a company while undertaking investment decisions. Under IFRS, revaluation of fair value is allowable for intangible assets. Except goodwill, revaluation is performed only when reference to an active market is possible. People are generally willing to pay more when they perceive a brand and this is because of quality and reliability. Current financial statements do not represent differences in brand values of a company like Apple and its hypothetical counterpart who may be having equal uh, asset base. It is important that the accounting professionals at least consider the implications of the current standards and contemplate a change to the way in which brands are valued and the way in which brand equity is recorded and reported.